it. Thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you a couple of really cool applications of Laplace's equation. And just to remind you, Laplace's equation is minus Laplace, you know, u equals zero. And the question is, where does this arise? And by the way, I highly invite you, if you have other applications you can think of, please comment on them in the comment section. But at least a couple of them that I know, I can know on the quotation marks. First of all, it arises in physics. In other words, suppose you have a metal plate or a metal cake or something that you leave out for a very long time until the temperature has settled, then it turns out, given a point x in your region, u of x gives you the temperature of a metal plate Not for all time, that would be the heat equation, but after a long time. So again, once the plate has settled, you know, it's in equilibrium, then u of x gives you the temperature. That's one thing. The second application, if you're ever interested in image processing, or MRIs, it's quite interesting because if you think about this, a picture is very pixelated, at least the way it was when I grew up. And the question is, how would you go from a pixelated picture to a very rounded picture? like this by Mona Lisa, well, it turns out you can use Laplace's equation for that. I believe what you do, you use like an inverse problem. So maybe inverse Laplacian or something like that. And, and that's why it's also very important. Again, the, the, this video maybe wouldn't even exist without Laplace's equation. And then if you're interested in application of applications of math into pure math. Um, it's very useful, of course, in complex analysis. Because at least in um, two dimensions, we know that if a function of a complex variable, if f goes from c to c, and it's analytic or holomorphic or whatever you want to call this is holomorphic. Then both the real part and the imaginary part solve Laplace's equation. So real of f and imaginary part of f solve Laplace's equation. And Indeed, that's another way of getting solutions of Laplace's equation, namely take any holomorphic function you want and just take the real and imaginary parts. For instance, let's take the squaring function, f of z equals z squared, which is x plus i y squared. So x squared plus two i x, 2x i y plus i y squared, which becomes x squared minus y squared plus 2x y i. What this is saying is that if you take the function x squared minus y squared and the function 2x y, they both solve Laplace's equation. So x squared minus y squared and 2xy solve, again, Laplace's equation, which in this case is uxx plus uyy equals zero. Okay, and you can generate solutions from this. It's very, very neat. Okay, that's one thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> Keep forgetting stuff, but... Um, Solutions to Laplace's equation are called harmonic functions. Why are they called harmonic? It turns out it comes from music. So 
In fact, math also arises in music, so you can use it PDEs to study instruments, so music. And this is really, really cool, I have to tell you. So let you be the surface of a drum. So this is you, and this is with the boundary of you. And let lambda be a real number. Okay? Lambda as an eigenvalue. And consider the following solutions. Of minus Laplacian of u equals lambda u. Again, this is small u and this is capital U. So in u and u equals zero on the boundary. Now, of course, zero is a solution, right? Laplacian of zero is zero, lambda of zero is zero. So that's not a problem. But the question is, when are there non-trivial solutions? So again, we know this is the Laplace in this zero, and we know u equals zero here. The question is, when are the non-trivial solutions? Well, most of the time there aren't, except for a special sequence of lambdas, which is called a sequence of eigenvalues. So fact, there is a sequence. Namely, starting with a positive number, zero less than equal, no, zero strictly less than lambda one. So the first eigenvalue is positive and strictly smaller than the second eigenvalue. And then lambda three, lambda four, etc., etc. For which the above PDE with lambda has a non-zero solution. This has a non-zero solution, which is quite amazing. It's like eigenvalues and eigenvectors in linear algebra. So again, what is an eigenvalue? It's a number such that this equation has a non-zero solution. Same thing here. An eigenvalue is a number such that this PDE has a non-zero solution. So sometimes you call PDEs infinite dimensional linear algebra. And this is a perfect illustration on this. And again, in linear algebra matrices only have a finite number of eigenvalues. Here we actually have a countable sequence of eigenvalues. And this first one is very important. It's what's called the principal harmonic. So it's kind of what guides. It's kind of the first sound that you see when you hear an instrument. And those are the overtones kind of like the leader guitar player and then the bassists and stuff. They're all important, but yeah. Um, and in fact, so again, those are, all those numbers are the numbers you hear when someone plays a drum. And in fact, there's a super interesting question that was posed by Mark Katz, namely, can you hear the shape of a drum? So again, can you hear? shape of a drum. In other words, if I only tell you what the eigenvalues are, so if I only tell you lambda 1, lambda 2, etc, etc, which again, the sounds that you hear, can you figure out what the big domain capital U is? And it's a super interesting question because the answer is in two dimensions, yes, if the domain is smooth. So yes, in two dimensions, if U is smooth. Okay, so like this, and then no, if U has corners. This 
you cannot recover just from hearing the eigenvalues. And what about higher dimensions? It turns out there's a 16-dimensional counterexample. Can you imagine 16? It's a crazy drum that you would have to hear. That's 16-dimensional, but yeah, yeah. Super interesting. And last but not least, one of my favorite examples, it's with Brownian motion. And again, do not attempt this at home. So. So suppose the following. So um, you're in a domain Again, this is u, this is the boundary, and you start at x, start, okay? No, you start at x, and then you party too much, so you had a little bit too much to drink, so you perform Brownian motion. So you do that until you hit the wall at a point x star, okay? And of course, once you hit the wall, it, you have some damage. Think maybe hitting the car in the wall, please don't do that. Um, and you have some damage, and at this damage, you have to pay some punishment or maybe some reward. Uh, G of X star. G of X star. Okay. The price you have to pay to your insurance, or just how much your head hurts if you want, if you hit a tree or something. Now, of course, this is a random event, right? Because not everyone will reach exactly this point. You could also reach this point, x star. You could reach this point, x star. So completely random event. Yet the cool thing is you can still extract a deterministic outcome from this by taking expected values. So let u of x be the expected or average. Expect punishment starting at X. At X. And in particular, notice if you're already at the boundary, your punishment is exactly G of X star. So U of X is just G of X. But the cool thing is, it turns out this u of x, it satisfies Laplace's equation, which again gives you cool uh, interpretation of Laplace's equation in terms of Brownian motion. So fact, u solve, again, minus Laplace in of u equals zero in u, and then u equals g on partial u. So it's a nice stochastic interpretation of Laplace's equation. And I believe you prove this by using the mean value formula of Laplace's equation in some sense. And by the way, there's an equally cool interpretation in terms of the heat equation, where this time you start at a certain x, but after a fixed amount of time, you say stop, and you get a sort of reward or punishment. And then it turns out that scenario solves the heat equation. But that I can do in another video. All right, I hope you like this Laplace extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.